welcome you to the graduation ceremony for the academic year 2022-2023. On this auspicious day, we are immensely pleased to have with us Mr. Ashok Suta, founding chairman and MD, Mind Tree, and executive chairman of Happiest Minds Technologies Limited. Mr. Ashok Suta is widely recognized as one of the pioneering leaders of the Indian IT industry. On this auspicious day, we have the unique right that has a very special significance, the lighting of the lamp. I invite Mrs. Elsama Thomas, co-founder of Good Shepherd International School, to lead the ceremony of lighting the lamp. I request our chief guest, Mr. Ashok Suta, to join Mrs. Elsama Thomas, followed by I request the graduating batch to move down the aisle. The flame of the lamp signifies knowledge, the greatest of all forms of wealth that dispels darkness. It brings in abundance, prosperity and good health. The upward movement of the flame denotes that these young graduates will soar higher in life in all their endeavors. The flame of one lamp is used to light the other lamps. This signifies that our young graduates will identify, preserve and pass on the divine light within them to spread peace and bring light in life of others. I request the parents and guardians to be seated and the student body to remain standing for the invocatory prayer and the school song. The invocatory prayer will be led by S.D. Nakshatra of grade 12. Please bow your heads. Our Father who is in heaven, the dispenser of our destiny and the Lord of time and history. We remember your holy name on this special occasion when the little ones who had come to this institution's fold many years ago have grown under the shadow of thy throne and now are ready to leave to find their vocations and careers in the world. We remember and praise your blessed name that sustains our pilgrimage on earth. We thank you, Lord, that all our students stand here under your grace and protection always. And true to your promise that the little ones will become a thousand, the small ones a strong nation, this institution has gone from strength to strength, from humble and small beginnings. It has spread forth its branches far and wide to be a safe home for the children of this generation from every part of the world. Bless and guide each and every one of them who are in the midst of their examinations. Bless their efforts to secure admissions at universities and professional colleges. Let them dwell secure under the everlasting wings of the Good Shepherd. We pray for the soul of Dr. P.C. Thomas, a founder principal. We pray for the well-being of Mrs. Elsama Thomas, Mr. Jacob Thomas, Mrs. Sarah Jacob, Mrs. Sheila Alexander, and all the members of the GSIS family who have been intimately associated with the upbringing and growth of these graduates. We pray especially for our teachers as they guide our students through their lessons and preparations for their examinations. 
May your loving hand be upon them to guide them, Lord. We praise you for the faithfulness that has attended the efforts that brought great repute and eminence to this institution. We pray for your presence throughout this graduation ceremony. We pray for your love's sake. Amen. Please be seated. I request the principal, Mrs. Sheila Alexander, and the coordinator of high secondary school and the IB diploma program, Mr. Suresh Tangarajan, to kindly escort the chief guest, Mr. Ashok Suta, to the stage. The farewell address on behalf of the school will be delivered by Shauryavir Malik of Grade 11. I have been here for 10 years now. And whenever somebody asks me about my seniors, I've always had a conflicted opinion. However, this is until I met the graduating batch, as it is right now. I have always believed that seniors exist to make our lives more tricky. But now, more than ever, I have realized that seniors are present to be our mentors. They guide us, help us when we're in trouble, and tell us how difficult math AHL can be. Good morning, respected Chief Guest, Mr. Ashok Suta. 
co-founder Ms. Elsima Thomas, President Mr. Jacob Thomas, Senior Vice President Student Staff Welfare Ms. Sarah Jacob, Principal Ms. Sheila Alexander, Dean of Academics Mr. Sudhakaran, members of the Academic Council, teachers, boarding house parents, and most importantly, my graduating seniors. It is our seniors who enabled us to get adjusted in a completely different environment. It was our seniors who made us feel that we are like free birds and can do anything that we want in life. You helped us maneuver through challenges. They have taught us about the very essence of hard work. I have seen them dedicate time and effort towards achieving their goals. While writing this speech, I had to share a room with seniors whom I witnessed working very sincerely. When I began my journey in this school in grade three, I quite honestly didn't understand a lot. I didn't know how to speak English and I frankly was quite lost. Imagine a little kid trying to avoid everyone he can because he cannot even begin to comprehend what is happening. That is when one student sitting among this batch here helped me. He showed me what life is like in a boarding school, a fourth grader helping out his junior third grader. Despite his having to quite literally spend hours advising me, he never hesitated. However, I still remember him getting frustrated at times. Keeping all the hatred, rivalry, and any other negative emotions aside, I am able to address you here today along with the entire school because of the wisdom you have imparted to me and to all of your juniors. While I am still able to address you from this podium, I would like to say that when you leave this block, there's gonna be an eternal space left, a feeling of emptiness. But after all that, the next chapter in your lives is going to be much bigger than anything else before it. You are the graduating batch of 2023. You have lived through earthquakes, pandemics, wars, and quite literally survived the IBDP and the ISE program. Yet, you're still sitting here at a time when opportunities created by those challenges have never been greater. Someone among you may find the cure for cancer or be a Tollywood actor, you know. Kantara 2 is always around. Whatever direction you take, I can guarantee that your world will change as you leave the school. And as a result of whatever it is you choose to do, our world will change as, as a result of your contributions. Contributions that will be determined by how you follow your dreams and imagination. I felt the joy as I watched you prepare for the ceremony. I saw you straighten each other's caps and gowns. I saw the hugging, the high fives, and the age-old signals of friendship and caring. I saw your unbridled enthusiasm for what you have accomplished. I, I wish all of you to take that enthusiasm that surrounds you today out into the world with you and use it to achieve your goals. You have done it. You have reached the next level. So soak it in every single second of it. All these people around you here are the same people who have helped you develop into the person who you are. In this way, here it is to the months that transformed into years with the friends who became family. I'd like to wish all of you the very best and end by saying, life is a race. If you don't run fast, you can still enjoy the scenery of the way to the finish line. Thank you. Thank you, Shaw Revere. The reply to the toast will be conveyed by Bhavya Saraugi of grade 12 on behalf of the graduating students. Here I am, finally taking my stand where I've always wanted to be. Good afternoon, respective chief guest, Mr. Asok Suta, co-founder, Mrs. Elsima Thomas, president, Mrs. Mr. Jacob Thomas, Senior Vice President, Student and Staff Welfare, Mrs. Sarah Jacob. Principal, Mrs. Sheila Alexander. Dean of Academics, Mr. Sudhakaran. Members of the Academic Council, Parents and Guardians, 
teachers, and shepherdians. I'd like to thank Shorvir Malik for his speech, which truly touched our hearts. Today, as we celebrate our graduation from Good Shepherd International School, it is a privilege to address you. It's hard to believe that it's been 10 long years of laughter, tears, and long nights of study, but we have finally made it, guys. As we graduate from our alma mater, I would like to take a moment to reflect on the incredible journey that has led us to this point. We have learned so much, grown in innumerable ways, and created memories that will last a la lifetime. It is our alma mater that has provided us with the knowledge, skills, and experiences that will shape our future. We didn't get here on our own. We are indebted to late Dr. P.C. Thomas, our founder principal, and his esteemed wife, Mrs. Elsima Thomas, without whose efforts we would not have been experiencing this feeling of success. We thank our families, teachers, our boarding house parents, nurses, and our mentors who supported us along the way. They listened to us when we were stressed, encouraged us when we needed motivation, and pushed us to be the best. We are forever grateful for the incredible education that we receive here. Let us carry the values and principles instilled in us by our alma mater as we embark on the next chapter of our lives. Let us put our newfound skills and knowledge to good use in order to make the world a better place for all. As we reflect our time at GSIS, I can't help but remember some of the most unforgettable experiences we have had as crooks, smugglers, and mules. Who can forget that time when we had to do a group project and our friend disappeared for a week? Or that time when we thought we lost our research paper and spent all night searching for it, only to realize that we had never saved it in the first place. Or that time when someone was suspended, even if it wasn't their fault. That one at fault was still enrolled in classes and was having a good time. As victims of the pandemic, we still refer to ourselves as the COVID batch. Even if COVID is long gone, the benefits that we sought still prevail. People who were affected by COVID were having a good time eating dominoes. And as a result, those in quarantine were struggling in the dorms eating rasam and rice. In our times, music was just one of the uses of MP3 players. It is because of us that the purpose of backpacks has changed. They accommodate items sold in a tuck shop. We are also to be blamed for greatly amplifying the consequences of accidentally forwarding emails to the wrong people. <laughs> so to be clear once more, ladies and gentlemen, GSIS is not a resort. On the other hand, we can all agree that our time at GSIS has truly been remarkable. Teachers, peers, and even our own blunders have all contributed greatly to our education. We matured into self-reliant, self-sufficient, and well-grounded human beings with an appetite for challenge. Attempting to make amends, reconnect, and make new connections, that's all we have known and that's all we will ever know. Now we are expected to create a whole new life for ourselves, for the first time, which is exciting, but scary. We are clutching on to the endless laughter with our friends, the late night talks, and every last moment that's familiar. In two short months, we are expected to look back and say that this is the past. It went by fast, just as our parents said it would. 
So let's hold on to every last second of our senior year. If our parents knew half the stories that our friends know about us, in all likelihood, we will no longer have the same relationship with them. <laughs> As we graduate today, let's give each and every one whom we associated with and took care of us uh, every step of the way a big round of applause and thank them for their unwavering support. Signing off, roll number 6098, Bhavya Saraudi. I invite Asfia Asiftara, the outgoing school captain, to lead her batch in taking the graduation oath. I request the graduating students to please rise. The graduation oath. We, the graduating class, of Good Shepherd International School, of Good Shepherd International School. Class, of 2023. class of 2023, do declare a solemn pledge, declare a solemn pledge of, loyalty of loyalty to our alma mater, to our alma mater on, this on this day of our graduation. That we will treasure in our hearts, in our hearts the, ideals, the ideals, principles, principles and prestige of our beloved school. We will uphold the motto of our school, truth, trust, and triumph in everything we do and in all our actions. We will always conduct ourselves with integrity and honor as we leave our school and to work hard in all our endeavors as we go forth as our school has taught us to. We are, we are grateful for the guidance, for the guidance knowledge, knowledge, and protection, and protection our, school our school has given us. We are indebted, we are indebted to, our to our teachers, mentors, mentors, mentors and all those who have cared for us, cared for us in, our years, in our school years and for the selfless devotion, the selfless devotion they have shown us. They have shown us. And, and that we shall strive hard to be good and useful members of our community in order to be worthy of the name of our alma mater. On this day, we take this oath and it is in our intention to preserve the dignity and rich heritage of our school, to live up to the hopes of our teachers and mentors and bring glory to our God and country. So help us God. The graduating batch of students will now render a hymn written by Isaac Watts that reminds man to rely on God's presence and find strength in him. It requests the supreme power to guard and protect us and bless our future. The graduating batch of students will now render the hymn, O oh God, Our Help in Ages Past.
please be seated. I now request the principal, Mrs. Sheila Alexander, to present the graduation certificates to the outgoing batch. We begin with Bhavya Sarawagi. S. D. Nakshatra. S. Roshan. T. M. Sneha Rosalind Madiha. Aspia Asif Tara Adi Saravanan Adish Singh Arora Ritika Selva Kumar M. Nishwant Abhinav Karunya Sundaram Akilesh Sai Bikina Raj Parmar Utkash Neeraj Arya Dwij Chirag Patel Viraj Rajiv Hiramat Laisha Gulia Jugal Naman Kumar Patel Yuk Hitesh Ramani Rudran Durey Sami Dari Himakar Grisha Harish Makwana Lavanish S. Gauda Adik Raghuram Riyan Rajni Patel
Bishop Vinod Dulhani. Akila Chandran Babu. Maharshi Diren Mevada. Kavya Jitendrabai Kakadia. Heer Bharat Bhai Hapani. Kautavarapu Lakshmi Maitri. Sumit Santosh. Jashil Dipal Desai. Elena Alex Kullivalapil. Harsh Bipinbhai Viradia. Devanand Kartikeyan. Abhay Hareshbhai Sardhara. Vivek Kumar Singh. Muhammad Atik Ali. Sanvi Bardia. Nishit Agrawal. Umang Sarju Patel. Veer Vishal Davaria. Rishab Jain. Alan George Kurian. Satvik Sudhir Gumbar. Priya Vasant Kataria. Parth Dinesh Bhai Monpara. (Applause) 
Sai Rishi Yerra Morasu. Vivan Ashish Bhandari. Ryan George Jiju. Ananta Rasiklal Kachala. Krish Abhishek Tulsiyan. Sai Ravi Prakash. Parth Dharmendra Patel. Sayam Praveen Singhvi. Devika Prashant Thakkar. Pratham Shivaramu Bhargav. Simon Agrawal. Vithalpara Krishna Patel. Pushti Rabara Viveka Rabara Hitansh Sangvi Advika Swaroop Mahadik. Aditya Ram TM. Prashad Harish Kumar Patel. Vishnu Gupta Drumi Hirani Akash Kuraganti Sarvagya Surana Dhruv Anil Dulhani
शशांक भंसल दानिया जनरल एंड प्रियांशी लोनागारिया थैंक यू शीला मैम We will now have the distribution of the much awaited special awards. It is time to recognize, appreciate and reward the meritorious students of the outgoing batch with the prestigious school awards for having exhibited excellence in not just academics but in activities, governance and the specific areas of duties and interests during the academic year 2022-2023. I request our chief guest Mr Ashok Suta to kindly present the special awards. We begin with academic excellence. From the ISC Science Group, we have Akila Chandran Babu. and Mohammad Atik Ali <laughs> from ISC Commerce M Nishwant Abhinav from IBDP Science Group Viveka Vinod Rabara bags the special award and from IBDP Humanities Group the special award for academic excellence goes to Veer Vishal Davaria The special award for the best musician goes to T M Sneha Rosalind Madihar. <laughs> best SCC cadet Utkash Niraj Arya. best singer elena alex kalliwalappel <laughs> best sports person ryan george jiju best dancer simon agarwal <laughs> best prefect adesh singh arora and the special award for the best all rounder goes to aspia asif tara thank you sir 
I request the principal, Mrs. Sheila Alexander, to deliver the welcome address. Special guest of the day, Mr. Ashok Suta, Executive Chairman of Happiest Minds Technologies Limited, Mrs. Elsima Thomas, Co-Founder and Managing Trustee of Good Shepherd International School, Mr. Jacob Thomas, President, Mrs. Sarah Jacob, Senior Vice President, Student and Staff Welfare, Mr. T. Suresh, Coordinator, Higher Secondary School, Mr. Ramas Subramaniam, Member of the Advisory Committee of Good Shepherd International School, the Academic Council members, special invitees, parents and guardians of the outgoing branch of grade 12, graduates, students and staff of Good Shepherd International School. It is with great pleasure that I welcome you all to the graduation ceremony of the outgoing branches of grade 12 students. It's my honor to extend a warm welcome to Mr. Ashok Suta, Executive Chairman of Happiest Minds Technologies Limited, who is widely recognized as one of the pioneering leaders of the Indian IT industry. He was the founding chairman of two very successful IPOs, Happiest Minds and Mindtree. Happiest Minds Technologies Limited is a born digital, born agile, mindful IT company that uses leading edge technologies to deliver solutions. Mr. Ashok has been the president of Confederation of Indian Industry, a member of the Prime Minister's Task Force for IT, and was on the advisory council for the World Intellectual Property Organization, Geneva. He's a fellow of INAE and on the Board of Governors of Asian Institute of Management, Philippines. He's a recipient of multiple awards for IT, Person of the Year and Lifetime Achievement, the Quality Ratna Award for 2021 from CI Institute of Quality. In 2022, he announced the creation of Happiest Health, a knowledge enterprise focusing on health and wellness in 2021. He launched SCAN, India's first private sector non-profit organization exclusively dedicated to carry out medical research on aging, neurological disorders, and gut microbiome access. In 2011, he established Ashirvadam, a trust for environmental projects and assistance to the needy. Mr. Ashok holds a bachelor's degree in electrical engineering from University of Roorkee and an MBA from the Asian Institute of Management, Philippines. He is the co-author of the national bestseller, Entrepreneurship simplified from idea to IPO. I extend a very warm welcome to you, sir, on behalf of the student body of Good Shepherd International School. I would like to extend a warm welcome to the parents and guardians who have traveled from distant places to be here today. You are our valued partners in the education of our students. And thank you for your participation and engagement in supporting the school and being here to celebrate this important milestone in the lives of our children. I would like to welcome our co-founder and managing trustee, Mrs. Elsama Thomas, our dear president, Mr. Jacob Thomas, 
the senior vice president, student and staff welfare, Mrs. Sarah Jacob, Mr. Rama Subramaniam, member of the advisory committee of Good Shepherd International School, a well wisher and chartered accountant, all the academic and administrative and co-curricular staff of Good Shepherd International School. It's a great pleasure to have all of you here and I welcome all of you. At this moment, I acknowledge the tremendous effort that has been put in by our teachers, boarding house parents and all other staff. Teachers, your commitment and passion have been instrumental in shaping these young minds, and we are proud of the work that you do every day. Today, we celebrate the graduation of 74 students. I congratulate the graduates, as well as your parents, your teachers, and well-wishers. You're fortunate to have been able to attend your classes and take your examinations without any disruption through an uninterrupted educational experience for the COVID batch, as you mentioned. This experience will reward you throughout your life. You're bound by the shared experience of a time that will not come again. Your batchmates will be your friends for the rest of your lives. These relationships that you have built in will remain a solid foundation for the upcoming years. Whatever the trajectory of your career arc may be, embrace the change that comes your day and never feel the need to be locked into a particular path just because you started out with it. Dear students, the day belongs to you. Today marks an important milestone in your life's journey. Entering this great school, leaving your parents, and living in a community is not an easy one, but you have accomplished that. There were moments and instances in your life where you had to face intense competitions, challenges, etc., but you pursued with dedication. Please continue your smart work and dedication to maintain high academic standards for the next two months so that you come out in flying colors from Good Shepherd International School and from your education from GSIS. It's a moment of pride for you as much as it is for your teachers, parents, and those who had any role in shaping your life so far. We are confident that we have transformed our students from well-filled minds to well-formed minds. Every time you remember the legacy and lessons learned in GSIS, Commit to carry the motto of the school. Truth, trust, and triumph with you as you take the next step in your journey. In that spirit and in, the, in that pride of our common identity, let's all work together to make a wor our world a better one. Congratulations, graduates, and best of luck on the road ahead. And do remember to put in your best for your board exams and the results will follow. I will repeat this every other day. I once again welcome everyone to this graduation ceremony for us to celebrate, recognize, and honor our students on their achievements. Thank you and God bless. I now invite the chief guest, Mr. Ashok Sota, to address the gathering. <clears throat> Mrs. Sheila Alexander, principal. Mr. T. Suresh, Higher Secondary School Coordinator, Mrs. Elsima Thomas, Co-Founder and Managing Trustee, Mr. Jacob Thomas, President, Mrs. Sarah Jacob, Senior Vice President, parents of the graduating Class 12 students, staff and students of Good Shepherd International School, 
I am delighted to have this opportunity to be in the wonderful ambience of your beautiful Good Shepherd International School. Before I begin my talk, I would like the students to respond to two questions. And at the end of my talk, I do look forward to receiving a few questions from not just the students, but anybody in the audience, simply because I hate monologues to be delivered. Uh, by now, uh, all of you have already selected your education program and disciplines as you move on to a graduation stage of your life in universities. You already have some idea of the career you want to pursue. I'm going to enumerate a few potential careers. You don't respond immediately, but then I will come to those one by one, and I'd like a show of hands on that. So uh, what I'd like to know is how many of you want to pursue being an engineer, doing an MBA, chartered accountants? How, do you, how many want to become doctors, teachers? And then one catch-all category for any other, in which may include law, economics, etc. And finally, a category which is really not sure at all what you want to do as yet, which is perfectly fine. And you'll evolve that as you go through. Uh, and then a last question on how many of you feel that sometime in your career, be it five years or 10 years or more, you will choose to become an entrepreneur. So that's the series of questions which I really want a show of hands. Uh, so how many of you want to go on to do an engineering degree and become engineers? Okay, so remarkably few. And that's fine, and I think that's an evolution of the way the world is moving also. And how many want to go on to do an MBA, a Master's in Business Management? Many, many more. Okay. Uh, and how many do you think would like to become chartered accountants? Ah, surprisingly, none at all. Okay. And how many to become doctors? Uh, this is also almost after the MBA is the next largest category. Oh, I've got some youngsters also wanting to become. And uh, that's good. We're good to hear, see what these kids feel about themselves. And teachers? Nobody wants to go back to this noble profession which has helped to reach you uh, where you are today. Uh, and do you think, anyway, a lot of you who haven't put up your hands at all, whether it's law, economics, or not sure, maybe I can get a show of hands from the rest of you. Everybody hasn't put up their hands, so anybody who has not yet put up your hands can put, do so now. But everybody hasn't as yet uh, put up. Okay, there's at least one, two, three of them. Okay, so that gives me a feel of where you believe you may want to go. Uh, how many of you think that at some stage in your career, it may be five years, maybe 10 years, you don't have to wait for as long as I did. I started my first company when I was 48 years old. But at any stage of your life, when do you think you, you may likely move to become an entrepreneur? Show of hands on that. Okay, so this is probably the single largest group. It, puts, it adds up to much more than the total. And that again is a sign of the times. And that is, uh, that there has never been a better time to be young, as there are so many opportunities and career choices than ever before, and so many new entrepreneurial paths than ever before, arising out of the change which, uh, uh, you know, the, your principal uh, just mentioned, Sheila Alexander, she said, embrace the change. It's not just embracing only, I say go forward and grasp the change. That's where your opportunities lie. However, too many choices can lead to confusion, and therefore you need a framework to fulfill your personal potential. Equally important for you to remember is that fulfilling your personal potential is not just about achievement and career success. Fully fulfilling your pot potential includes your potential for caring, your potential for sharing, for learning, for gratitude, and potential for happiness. 
So therefore, my talk is going to include preparing for the opportunities that life will bring, developing a sense of purpose for your life and your career, mapping your own personal characteristics with the requirements of a given job or an industry, and also being clear what you will not do. I will close with thoughts on self-awareness and self-discovery, and also my thoughts on gratitude and happiness. So firstly, now the prep uh, preparing for the opportunities that life will bring. Technological changes are disrupting industries at an accelerating pace. And it is these disruptions which are throwing up many new opportunities and completely new business models. Grasping these opportunities will depend on your attitude and preparation. My suggestions to you include, first of all, develop a lifelong habit of learning. We are living in a knowledge era and it's easy to become obsolete very soon. Secondly, build trust. Learn to trust people and learn to be trustworthy. It takes hard work, integrity, commitment, and sacrifices to build trust. Remember that it takes years to build trust and only one false action to destroy it. The next important requirement is really innovation all your life. Just as I said, learning. The sameness and monotony are death. Learn to connect the dots. Innovation is the interface between functional blocks. Know the larger picture and how things come together. Don't be afraid of failure. Everyone makes many mistakes during the course of a career. I can count dozens and dozens of them. Some of them cost my companies millions of dollars. It's important to remember what you achieved even as you went and then built on the successes that you were creating. It's important to learn from those mistakes, but in spite of learning also you, meet the, you may repeat that mistake. The important thing regarding mistakes is not to mope on your failure as it develops a negative mindset. Contrary to what many management gurus will tell you, I believe it's even more important to learn from your successes than your failures. Learn to replicate your successes, which will give you optimism and self-confidence. Uh, I'd like to give you an example on how you could learn from your successes rather than your failures from the sports world. How many of you are amongst this group, and I don't think I need to limit this even to the students, how many of you either play tennis or follow tennis? Okay, quite a large uh, proportion, pretty good. And you're in an environment where you certainly get a lot of scope and opportunity for sports. You know, there was a French Open championship where Roger Federer was one set down and trailing Love 40 on his own serve at 4-5. And who do you think was the opponent? It was our own lowly ranked so, uh, Sumit Nagal. He thereafter saved, served four aces in a row. He won the game and then the set, and the next set he won at 6 nil. So the opposition had clearly been blown away by then. And then, of course, he won the match. <coughs> and then when he was asked at the end what led to the recovery, he replied, I closed my eyes and visualized my serve and served my way out of trouble. So this is a great example of replicating on your successes. You build on what you think you're very good at. Let me now come to developing a sense of purpose for your life and career. <coughs> Increasingly, ask yourself one question. Do I have a well-defined purpose for my life and career? This may change as you progress in your life. And then what you really need to do is to look ahead and then work backwards. So you set your purpose and then say, this is what I want to be. And then you look at the steps that are required to reach there. So you set those goals 
And then you should have dreams, but your dreams should be grounded in reality. At the same time, they should not be bounded by today's possibilities, but you should reset them as you go ahead in life. As an example, could our past president, Dr. Kalam, could he have ever dreamt that he will create world-class missiles for our defense system? He responded to new opportunities as these opened up. Next, choose what you're passionate about. And this again is something which one must keep emphasizing because whatever you do, you have to be passionate about it to be able to make a success of it. Follow your strengths, be true to yourself, and success will follow. Don't get overly influenced by the size and value of an offer when you get into the job world. Odds are that the highest paying job may not be the best long-term job. And then I think it's important to understand what are the requirements of a job and how do these match with your own personal strengths. There's a mind-boggling range of opportunities. Each of them offers its own career path. But it is, it's equally important that you choose what you're good at, not just because it offers the highest amount of money, something which you will be passionate about. So therefore, some of the principles behind the choice of a career. Firstly, as I mentioned, you examine the characteristics and traits needed to be successful in a given role. And just to illustrate that, there may be some jobs which really cater towards, let's say, someone who's got an opportunity to uh, achieve very high growth rates in an organization. And there are others which really rely on very high efficiency. Somebody who can get every single penny of cost out of the system. You need to know where your own skills are. And then you go into a business or a role where you're able to build on your strengths. Critically examine yourself on those areas and then ask yourself, am I going to be passionate about it? And if you do realize that you've run it in a role, be very careful to realize if there's a mismatch and then decide to move on. Uh, one guidance I can give you about a new growth area <clears throat> in case some of you are interested and passionate, which can certainly propel you into higher growth because the area is growing so rapidly. And that is, for example, the field of biotech and biosciences. For so some of you who sought to be doctors, again, it's a wonderful variation. Without all of the, uh, and I think it's really important to put in those years of hard work as you become a doctor, out here you can have multiple forms of rewards, including getting into research careers, which can really change the lives of people and millions of people as you progress. <coughs> and the whole area of biosciences is growing so rapidly that it is opening up unprecedented new opportunities. I want to now talk a little bit about what not to do. First, taking shortcuts. You must do it right the first time and with the highest standards of governance and never compromise on integrity. You may not realize the importance of governance today when you've not entered the business world, but let me tell you that that is the most important thing. Once you've got those fundamentals right, then you build on those to be, uh, to be able to achieve success. Secondly, you should never make commitments on which you cannot deliver. Third, never put your own individual aspirations over team goals or seek to corner glory for a team achievement. Uh, obviously, never denigrate others to protect yourself. <coughs> and then one risk, never become complacent because of your early success. <coughs> Do excuse me, excuse me. <coughs> I'll now talk about <coughs> self-awareness to self-discovery. Up till now, I have tried to avoid talking of myself. However, in this section of my talk, I'm happy to share my experience on self-awareness to self-discovery. Shortly after I began my career, I drew up a list of 18 opposing pairs of traits and did a self-rating on a scale of 10. I did this for about 20 years. These traits included, on one side, on a scale of 0 to 10, being selfish and helpful. 
on another scale, <coughs> being methodical or haphazard, uh, unhappy and happy, irritable or a pleasant disposi disposition. This phase went on for those first 20 years, but the self-discovery phase began in January 1991. On a vacation to Lakshadweep, I carried a book of spiritual exercises called Wellsprings by Anthony DeMello, or a Jesuit street, a priest. The very first exercise, titled The Conclusion, gave me key insights. I recorded these in detail and revisited them for many years. The exercise covered issues which included the experiences I cherished, convictions I have lived by, and things I have lived for. The very last point was my unfulfilled desires. Here I wrote, becoming an entrepreneur and writing a book which would influence thousands of persons. It was not till 1999 I fulfilled the first wish of becoming an entrepreneur. And it was not till 2015 that I wrote Entrepreneurship Simplified, which has become a bestseller and where I could include the distilled experience of starting both Mindtree and Happiest Minds. And now I expect my next book to be published within the next six months. So far, <clears throat> I have focused my talk mainly to your graduating class. Let me now share a few things which I believe can be of equal value to all, including parents and faculty. In life, you will encounter many challenges and problems. One of my most important principles is to look for the opportunity presented by the problem and convert the hurdle into a path for new success. I really must emphasize this. Every time you see a problem, look for the opportunity within the problem. Look at the opportunities that that problem may throw up. I'll give you an example from my life. I had been leading Mindtree for 12 years as executive chairman. Then an incident occurred involving some of my co-founders, which made it anathema to me to continue working with them. It really, and it was traumatic because the first time in my life, which had been marked and filled with so much success, so much goodwill, so much happiness with all my colleagues, that suddenly something like this had happened. However, <coughs> and it, uh, I was at that time 68 years old, and I would have retired anyway at the age of 70, just two years hence. Instead of thinking in those terms, I decided I'd start a new company. And that is how Happiest Minds came into existence. It has already given me a fresh runway of 12 years. I must admit again that just keeping and running this and some of the many other things I'm doing is what keeps me energized. Uh, the successful IPO of Happiest Minds led to the creation of SCAN, my not-for-profit medical research trust, <clears throat> which focuses on aging and neurological ailments. SCAN itself gave me the idea of creating Happiest Health, a knowledge enterprise which I launched at the age of 79. Hopefully Happiest Health will also be successful and thereby help to provide further funds to move, make SCAN a truly world-class research center, which I do hope to make as my legacy. <clears throat> Let me now talk to you about keeping your mind engaged. Just as physical activity keeps our bodies fit and energized, so also mental activity keeps our minds healthy, energized, and created. I have seen so many people slow down enormously and even sink into dementia after retiring. And this is really addressed to the older generation here. But one word specifically for parents. You may have had many dreams which you didn't pursue. Maybe you were making sacrifices for your family and uh, kids to see them through their education. Or you were just too cautious to take the plunge. My advice is that it's never too late. And you should make the remaining years of your life the most productive and the creative years of your life. In your life and pursuit of success, finally, don't forget about happiness. Aristotle said that the purpose of life is happiness. Happiness now 
and every day, not a mirage in the distant future. To quote Donna, Dr. Bronnie Ware, life is a choice. It is your life. Choose consciously, choose wisely, choose honestly, choose happiness, and success will follow. Another important principle, please be aware of all the people and things for whom you should be grateful. <coughs> Uh, when you express gratitude, you can never be unhappy as you're counting your blessings. Uh, and of course, I'm glad to see the focus on this. Even in your graduation day program, you have already learned how to express gratitude towards your parents, towards your school, towards your friends, all of the people who have contributed to your happiness. One important aspect of happiness which you may not realize, and gratitude, is that it helps you to forgive and not carry grudges. If I go back to my example of my odd, you might say, decision to leave Mindtree, a company I had co-founded, once I took that decision and started Happiest Minds, I was filled with gratitude as the behavior of my friends and my colleagues who had been at one time very close to me helped me to take one of the best decisions of my life. Forgiveness followed, just one step behind my feeling of gratitude. Finally, in closing, uh, as you step out into the world, do so with self-confidence. Do so with a belief that you can make a difference. In the words of Anthony DeMello again, say to yourself, I am a treasure. Someday, somewhere, someone, discovered me, and through this, discover yourself. Wishing you all the very best in your life and careers ahead. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Ashok Sota. Your address touched upon various aspects that will preoccupy the minds of our graduates, like leading a purposeful life, to embrace as well as grasp change, and to be always grateful to the work and the affection that has made them what they are today. Uh, at this moment, I would like to throw open this forum to questions from the graduating batch of students, as well as the other students of Good Shepherd International School, if they have any, to Mr. Suta. Tell us your name and what class you're in. I'm, I'm Jonathan. I'm from grade four. Okay, very good. Cheer. Three cheers for you for a start. So when did you start your business? When did I start? Okay. <laughs> you know, in a sense, my whole career was in business, you might say. So I began working when I graduated, as many of you would do. Now, you'll be amazed how many years ago that is. So nine, I started working in 1963. And after I graduated from IIT Roorkee, which is now IIT Roorkee, it used to be University of Roorkee. So how many years does that make it? It's close to 60 years, isn't it? 60 years. So it's quite amazing. I began my entrepreneurship at the age of 48 when I started Mindtree. And then I became a serial entrepreneur when I started Happiest Minds at the age of 59. So does that give you an answer? Good. Thank you. So you can start very early with whatever you're planning. <laughs> oh, very good, good boy. I know I saw one. Sir, my Go name ahead. is Yog. Your name, please? I have please? a question. What do you think about people who involve personal emotions in the work they do? Uh, how, what do you think about people who involve emotion their personal emotions in, in the work, in the work you do? Hmm. 
see, I'll tell you one thing. When I talk about being passionate, isn't passion an emotion? So I'm saying, please be passionate. Please display your emotions. That doesn't mean they have to be negative emotions after all. The more you express, gratitude is also an emotion. And the more you display of those, the better it is. And another aspect, just don't suppress things. That is what leads to people getting bottled up, getting negative, getting maybe even developing depression, if you will, at times as you go through, because you're not expressing yourself. Please be free to express whatever you can in a positive way, which energizes not only yourself, but everybody around you. I would like to ask, what were the problems you faced during your business as you told us about from the speech that there was an issue with the business and he made it? You know, <clears throat> see the problem there was a very personal issue. So I've actually, this is the very first time I've referred to it in public, though it happened many, many years ago. And these things can happen. Uh, one of my board members who I actually shared this information with said that the problem that happened, there were 10 of us as co-founders. He says, these things actually don't happen except in a family because we were so close to each other. And you guys are a family and therefore whatever happened, happened. But the important thing here was to be able to move out in a positive frame. If I had continued to stay there, I think they would not have been comfortable and I was not going to be comfortable looking at them and I would have always had this feeling of resentment. Uh, and therefore what happened was, I said, hey, but there's a new opportunity here. Why do I have to worry about it? And I think that is the important thought I want to leave you behind with. Not what happened in my case, but whatever you can do whenever you see a problem. Look for that and say, how do I make this into a positive force for change? How do I look for the opportunity in that problem? Now just look at it. You know, if I had decided to retire at 70, maybe I'd have found something else to do. But having started Happiest Minds, then I took it on. Mindtree was a record IPO. And it was wonderful that Happiest Minds became the second record IPO to break the records of Mindtree. So that's the biggest satisfaction in life. Thank you, sir. Good afternoon, sir. My name is Sham. I'm from grade 10. And it's a special day of graduation ceremony. So uh, do you actually miss our seniors and what have you learned from them? Just repeat that if you don't mind. It's okay, uh, so this is a special day of graduation ceremony. So what have you learned from your seniors and uh, like any ideas or something? Or do you miss them? Uh, let me try and paraphrase and see if I've understood this. You said, uh, what have we learned or are you asking me here? I learned from my seniors yeah. in a similar occasion. You know, I don't think you ever stop learning for a start. I wouldn't, I wouldn't just restrict it to saying, hey, what have you learned from your seniors here? Obviously, you learn from your peers equally and not just your seniors. You learn at every step of the way. And amongst other things, I think as you develop your career and move ahead in life, you learn by looking at people who are role models. And I believe that it's not even possible to make any one person your role model. If I look at my career, my first two bosses, one was a dynamic entrepreneur, but he would change his mind every day. Exceedingly difficult to work with. I mean, he could pick you up and then demolish a person in the pro while he would accelerate people's career developments. The other one was as thorough as he could be, did all his research, did his homework, uh, and always came in with all the logical answers and uh, pros and cons, thoughts and feelings, and whatever that was required to be able to take a correct decision. They themselves actually worked pretty well together. You might have thought that with those two opposing temperaments, how could you? And together, they constituted a good role model for me. Any one would be incomplete, but both together were yeah, a very good role model. And therefore, I'm, you look for whomever you can learn from. Uh, and certainly, by all means, I hope you've already learned from your own peers, from your teachers, from your uh, seniors. So I can't tell you what you should learn from them. I guess you've already absorbed that. Thank you, sir.
गुड आफ्टरनून गुड आफ्टरनून सर दिस इज शक्ति मै टीचर इन मैथमेटिक्स सो माई क्वेश्चन इज लाइक योर योर लाइफ स्टोरी इज अ वेरी एपिटोम ऑफ इट्स नेवर टू लेट टू स्टार्ट बट इन दिस एरा ऑफ सोशल मीडिया एंड ऑल दी थिंग्स विच वी आर वी हैव अराउंड at the very age of 20 23 we start feeling that we have not done enough and that might happen with uh, the passing out students in 2 to 3 years coming by so what is your greatest advice to sure. come out of sure. this fear that we are getting lost sure sure you know that i think is a really important issue i talked about so many opportunities the choices you want to make if you look at the response of everybody want to become an entrepreneur it's the single largest thing and in the process you can also cause damage to yourself if you're not ready you know one thing you must remember about entrepreneurship uh, there's a lady there if you don't mind just turn around because i yeah, you don't need and uh, uh, so uh, if uh, you you know you you move into entrepreneurship you got this glamorous thought that you're going to go out and create nowadays everybody wants to create a unicorn and uh, i have something negative about unicorns but that's not the point for every success that you hear about let me tell you there are 100 maybe even a thousand failures so entrepreneurship is not a bed of roses <clears throat> also remember that if you go out to get a job odds are if you've done well in your career you choose a good company uh, you're going to get a much higher salary than you'd be able to pay yourself so the entrepreneurship also involves years and years of sacrifice and paying yourself and trying to see how to keep life going in fact that is one of the reasons why i recommend a little late stage it doesn't have to be as late as me i i started my entry late because i was doing a wonderful uh, i was enjoying what i did at uh, wipro i was leading the company for 50 in years and therefore there was no need for me to uh, you know move into Uh, entrepreneurship then the opportunity came which is too good to review uh, to turn down which is the dot com boom but when i got into it look at what i brought i brought a track record so i could get money literally at the click of a finger uh, and therefore i could think big and because i could think big i could hire people who uh, i could pay good salaries to i no longer had to do all the struggle that goes with a startup and that i think is the importance you build on your experience there's no rush you've got a whole lifetime ahead the second aspect i would say for people who do start very early by all means do so but you know in the end if it's going to lead to a very early stage burnout life after all is getting expectancy is going up high and higher and if you're going to live to say being 80 plus which is what i am today then you're going to be idle for the next 40 years of your life if you say at 40 i'm going to quit and retire because i'm burnt out so keep that in mind you've got a whole life ahead of you when i said look at your purpose in life and work backwards try and visualize your whole life as you go through and there's plenty of time to do your startup you don't have to rush into it but if if you're really cut out for that that's what you must do then by all means do it ask yourself what is it that i'm going to be passionate about what do you think i'm going to be uh, and realize the inherent risks of starting too early and then saying you're going to bootstrap it let me tell you that's a pain in the neck okay um hi sir um my name is sneha and i'm from k12 um was it very difficult for you to choose your career were you very unsure about your career Well you know I did say that too many choices leads to confusion I must tell you when I graduated there were no choices there was hardly any jobs going you came out from engineering you had to go into calcutta where all the engineering jobs were and hope that you'll get a job in one of those nobody came to your campus even to uh, uh, do interviews so that's a really long time ago if you had done finance you went to bombay where you got the finance jobs there was hardly any other places to go to today so so what happened it was very clear i i took d- uh, a decision but by then i had also realized one thing that the first job i took everybody thought it was the most wonderful job i must tell you it wasn't what i really wanted to do in my life i think where i probably did the right things was that my first two changes in my life 
I actually moved into jobs which gave me a lower salary than the job I started with. Because I realized that there was no challenge in that job. It wasn't what I was cut out for. I joined Burma Shell, which is an oil company. I did an engineering job, then Burma Shell, and then that. But that engineering one was only a few months. And then, at the young age of 21 or 22, Burma Shell gave me a, a, a car allowance and so many other things to travel around the city to do the sort of work I had to do. And then I realized, where's the challenge in that job? Uh, so then I switched. Uh, to become a management trainee in DCM. And from there again, when I moved into from that career, and then 19 years I was in the career, but when I moved into IT, when I moved as president of Wipro, I moved to a company which was seven times smaller than the company which I was managing. I moved at a lower compensation than the compensation, because obviously they could not pay me what the larger company was paying. But that is because I was looking at saying, where can I contribute? What is it that I will enjoy? What is it I'll feel passionate about? And I'd say if you follow those principles, understand your own characteristics, what is needed in a job, like in IT. I mean, why did I choose IT at that stage? I decided that my key skill is really creating high growth. And this was a nascent industry which was going to grow rapidly. So it fitted into a basic skill of mine. And that is how I made the decision. So I wasn't looking at a specific industry. I was looking at my characteristics, the characteristics required of a job, trying to get a match between the two, and then made the decision. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, Mr. Suta, for patiently answering the questions and sharing your valuable insights. I, I now request the coordinator of higher secondary school and the diploma program, Mr. Suresh Tangarajan, to express his appreciation and gratitude. Respected guest of honor, Mr. Ashok Suta, Founding Chairman and MD Mindtree and uh, Executive Chairman of Appiest Minds Technologies Limited. Co-Founder, Mrs. Elsama Thomas. President, Mr. Jacob Thomas. Senior Vice President, Staff and Student Welfare, Mrs. Sarah Jacob. Principal, Mrs. Sheila Alexander. Members of the Academic Council, Mr. Ramasubramaniam, a member of the Advisory Committee of Good Shepherd International School. Parents, guardians, well-wishers, and all the 74 outgoing graduates, and my dear students, it is a great honor and privilege for me to express my sincere gratitude on this solemn occasion. I'm extremely fortunate having had the opportunity to uh, listen to a very enlightening and uh, motivating a speech by Mr. Ashok Suta. Uh, I'm using this opportunity on behalf of the student body as a token of uh, appreciation and gratitude. I request Mr. Ashok Suta to accept a small memento from the student body. Thank you, sir. Through uh, Mr. Ashok Suta's speech, uh, certain things which uh, will uh, always keep ringing in our mind is especially about the personal potential and your career success because sometimes we uh, forget about the main uh, dispositions which we need to have always, a caring attitude or a, a sense of purpose in life or uh, showing uh, gratitude to others especially being a lifelong learner is another uh, point so I was sharing and also sometimes we forget to learn from mistakes because mistakes are a part of life. We need to learn from mistakes. And a very important part what Sir told is build on what you are good at it. Because when you are good at something, it is always better to pursue that as your career because that will finally help you to succeed. 
Thank you, Mr. Ashok uh, Sota, for your speech as well as for consenting to give away the special awards. Thank you, uh, uh, Sheila, Ms., for consenting to give away the graduation scrolls. I also wish to express my sincere thanks to all the members of Academic Council for their support and encouragement to make this occasion a, a successful one. We are very grateful to our uh, resident medical officers, Dr. Albin and Dr. Al Laura, and their medical team for always ensuring the well-being of students and staff during this academic year. A very warm uh, thank you goes to uh, grade 12 students who have uh, doing their choir this time. And uh, the music you'll be uh, listening after this, especially uh, a background score by our own grade 12 students. Event like this especially requires uh, meticulous planning and execution. I express my sincere thanks and appreciation to our Director of Activities, Mr. Dominic Jude Erst, and his active team. Can give a round of applause for him. The faculty of GSIS deserve a special word of thanks for the excellent achievement over the years and the smooth organization of the ceremony. I take this opportunity to extend my most sincere thanks to all the proud parents, guardians, and well-wishers, relatives, and friends who made it for this uh, ceremony. Last but not the least, I would like to thank the boarding house parents, mess managers, administrative officer, campus supervisors, Jackson Sashi, and also academic secretaries, Divya, Sini, and Manoj, support staff at all levels for their, throughout the year, for our students' stay in Good Shepherd. <laughs> I sincerely appreciate and compliment all the members of staff at all levels, uh, and the students of this institution. We have put in hard work for and best efforts to make this ceremony a memorable one. To the outgoing graduates, our presence would have been meaningless without you. And especially I remember uh, a few things which I thought I should tell you that, uh, especially when I uh, always uh, uh, be a part of this graduation ceremony, I always remember uh, our uh, founder principal, Dr. Thomas, five Ps especially. Proper planning prevents poor performance. So kindly keep that in mind as you are approaching your uh, board examination in due course. And tomorrow also we have a, a chemistry exam for ISC2. And finally, I want to conclude with uh, uh, what uh, Mr. Ashok Sota has told that the purpose of life finally is uh, happiness. So life is very short. Be happy always. Let me once again thank our guest of honor, uh, Mr. Ashok Sota, on behalf of one and all at Good Shepherd. I thank you all for your attention. Have a great day. Next we have a graduation batch song. The graduating batch will now put on a show as they make their great escape into their memory lane here at GSIS. As they sing a medley of songs, they remember how they've made friends, who have always been there through the highs and lows, how they've grown up from knowing nothing to being the 2023 heroes here today, how they continue to build dreams and empires, knowing that they owe it all to each other and to this great institution. And most importantly, knowing that they cannot make it alone in their journey forward and being confident that the bonds that they've built here will forever be their support and force. Ladies and gentlemen, the batch of 2023.
the graduating batch of students will now sing the song Carry Your Candle, written by Chris Rice and first recorded by Kathy Tricoli in 1995. Carry Your Candle conveys to us a powerful message that all of us have a candle in us. And our mission must be to light the candle and dispel darkness, not just in us, but share our light with others and bring joy in their lives. Dear parents and guardians, the graduation ceremony of the academic year 2022-2023 ends on a note of high optimism and hope. Good Shepherd International School wishes the students of the graduating batch all the best. <laughs> 